Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over how to set up translucency in Redshift and how to make a quick translucency channel inside of Redshift if you don't have a actual map created for you or created in an external application. So first off, I'm just using a quick grass from Quixel's Megascans. So it's just a free asset. You can go to quixel.com slash megascans and run over there to their free library and grab this ribbon grass. It's what I'm using right here in this project. I'm also using a tree uh, that you'll see later on that I've exported from speed tree. So you don't need these assets, but these are just kind of what I'm using to uh, kind of demonstrate some things. So first off the, the grass that I have here. So I'm going to show you what it looks like without the translucency channel enabled. So this is without GI or anything. It's just a quick, default settings render of redshift with uh, with just the materials plopped in there and uh, no translucency enabled. And this is what it looks like. So obviously uh, not the best. These, you know, the backsides of these grass don't look very good, uh, very blacked out. Obviously if you had the um, GI enabled, it would lighten some of this up, but it would still kind of look a little blown out, not as, not as good. So let's take a look at it with translucency. So obviously it looks a lot better. There's still a couple, you know, weird artifacts uh, going on here, but it looks a lot better overall. And all you have to do uh, to have that, if you take a look at the alpha, let's go over to mega scans. And I believe it's the plants 3D. If I take a look at the textures here. You can see that this translucency channel uh, is just basically the same as the albedo, but it's a little bit lighter and it's in here for us. So what happens if we don't have this? Uh, but first off, let's show you what, what the shader graph looks like with it. So if you set up, this is just kind of everything just thrown in there. All you have to do is pipe the translucency into the translucency color. So just, you know, drag it in there and then it's under diffuse backlighting and translucency and you want to hit the color. So the reason we're using the color is because that's going to drive the actual color of the translucency. And then if we set up our material we can if we click on our material we can adjust the weighting accordingly so I have it set to about a little over half of the maximum weight just because if you set it fully up and if I let's pull up our redshift render view that was from earlier once this kind of populates in here you're gonna see kind of what it looks like it's taking a second here to pair the scene. So I turn off my tree here, make it a little bit easier. So this is actually with the GI and everything enabled. Uh, you can see that with the, and actually I think this is the wrong texture on there, using the second texture that I have. So if I s take a look back, whoops, that's wrong thing. Take a look at this redshift render preview. You can see that our, our texture you know, it looks good. It's got the, obviously the um, GI going now, and then it's got the translucency as well. But if we go over here and we set these side by side, as I drag this weight up and down, you can see that it's just kind of darkening those up. So it's kind of off your, you know, preference of what you want. But this weight, as you bring it up, obviously when you bring it to one, that just looks really bright. I don't really like the look of that. It looks little too bright. So I think I had it something like a little over half, like 6, 0.664, somewhere around there is what I was using. And uh, as you can see, it's darkened it up a little bit. It's still kind of bright, uh, but it kind of just brings back the, you know, the color from the shadow. So this is just kind of blacked out and not really realistic. So if you just add a little bit of this translucency in, it will bring a lot more realism to your your vegetation scene. So uh, let's jump out of that and let's actually jump back over to our picture viewer. So as I drop down to this next one, this is going to be with the kind of the, the translucency map that I set up inside of Redshift. So I actually just created it with Redshift and not using the translucency uh, map that I was given from Megascans because you know, a lot of times you're not going to actually have that translucency map and you don't want to, you know, not have one and have it not look as good. So 
I jump back and forth, it's not exactly perfect. As you can see here, the colors are a little bit, you know, more washed out. And you could pump that up a little bit with the with the saturation, but it still looks a heck of a lot better if I set this as A and I set this one as B. You know, the second one looks a heck of a lot better than this just super dark grass than, you know, so set it up and you can have a, have a nice translucency channel in there. So let's show you how I was actually able to do that. I actually need to just drop that down and drag this texture back on. And you can see kind of, if we go into our actual shader graph, bring up the correct shader graph, I'm using the albedo texture and just dropping that through a color correct. And I'm upping the gamma because it needs to be a little bit brighter. If you look at the difference between this translucency map right here and the albedo. You can see this one just by looking at the thumbnails is a lot brighter than the albedo. So we wanna kind of mimic that by upping the gamma. And I added some contrast too to make it look a little bit better. And let's actually pump up the saturation and let's take a look. Let's see, that's a little too much. Dial that back down to maybe 1.2. I'll bring us back a little bit closer to the actual map that we were given and if I Send this to our picture viewer. Take a look. Now if I set this one to A and then this one to B, it's gonna be a little bit different because the they're a little bit different uh, orientation, but you can kind of see that it's brought back some of that, if you look at this specific grass piece right there, it's brought back some of that coloring maybe a little bit too strong, but you can pump up that saturation and it'll bring back some of that coloring that you're missing in this grass right there. So that's a super simple and easy way to get yourself a, a translucency channel. Just set up, just pump it through a redshift color correction node and then you know change the settings a little bit, pump up the gamma, make it a little bit brighter, add a little bit of contrast and maybe a little saturation and you're all good. So now if I jump over to the picture view again, just kind of look at these if I turn off our A and B. Uh, if I jump to this image right here, this has a tree obviously that I brought in from Speed Tree. Like I said, uh, this is with GI enabled, uh, but without our translucency map. So it looks pretty good and it's uh, set up super nice so it renders really quick. Uh, by using sprite nodes if you want to learn how to use sprite nodes for any sort of uh, objects that have trans or have uh, opacity it will make your objects render a lot faster especially if it's something like trees that have all these leaves that are using opacity it'll render a lot quicker if you use sprite nodes i have a video on that and you can watch that but this is just set up here without and let's take a look at with our translucency map enabled so it's just a little change. I don't know how well you guys can see that on YouTube, but if I dive in here, and why don't I set this one to B, and then I set this one to A, and bring this back up. As I zoom in here specifically on this portion, you can see that here's without. It's kind of dark and kind of just washed out with the, uh, the GI, but if you bring that back, you can kind of tell, it's kind of hard to tell probably on YouTube, but this is just a little bit more saturated in the, in the shadows and it brings back a nice little amount of color back to those shadows that you don't get without the translucency map enabled. And this is using the exact same setup that I had on our grass. If I take a look at our two leaves here, uh, this, I had them unplugged, but pipe those back into the translucency color. And then the same one on here, have them all set up and everything. So I was using a value of 0.2 on this, just to give it just a nice little subtle kind of uh, tint to the shadows, but it ups the believability and the, the realness of your renders just, uh, just a tiny little bit that makes it 
gives it a nice sort of look to it. So it's something that is just a, you know, a subtle thing, but it's something that will help out astronomically. Uh, and like I said, speed tree is something that doesn't have the translucency map uh, enabled or, you know, given to you. So just set it up yourself by using these color correction nodes, and then you can pipe it into your translucency color with your albedo plugged in there. So super quick and easy to set that up and we'll just you know bring that little extra bit to your renders. But hopefully this helped you out and gave you an idea of maybe how you can use this differently and actually you can do some kind of cool things. If you want like a sci-fi sort of render, maybe you change the, the hue on this and then I'm not exactly sure where that's looking like and if I maybe bring the translucency weight up here, I'm not sure what color it was bringing it to, but you can really tell. It's such as something else random. Bring our, our weight on up. Get some, some nice cool different looks to it. Maybe let's take a let's take a picture viewer just to see. To kind of illustrate some some different things that you could do with this. It's gonna take just a second to render out here. So looking at these leaves you can see that with that hue shift enabled, you can kind of get some cool looks and just you know dial in your textures a little bit more and uh, maybe create some sci-fi type looks, maybe set up to something that's like a nice purple or pink or whatever and get yourself a cyberpunk look to your trees or something and maybe change the color of, of your leaves up a little bit too. But there's all sorts of things that you can use this for and uh, it'll help out make it look a little nicer and, and cooler. So. Hopefully it helped you out and gave you some ideas, but that's uh, all for this video. Please feel free to check out some other videos on my channel. I've got a bunch more tips and tricks for Redshift and Cinema 4D and a bunch more coming out as well. So make sure you uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos coming out. But thank you guys for watching and have a good night.